Hey everyone, Tin Man here with some Jund mid-range. Uh, playing and trying to rank up into the top 10 masters at least. Um, currently sitting at 39. Um, Sand's not very great, doesn't really have much power, so we're going to redraw. Stuck is running 33 power sources, and honestly sometimes I want to run even more than that. Uh, it's very uh, power and influence hungry, uh, definitely. You know, with uh, triple influence cards and double doubles. Um, so I think we're just going to start off with the, the depleted power here so we can uh, quarry next turn. Uh, looking for power. Hey, that's good power. Keep that on top. Probably going to play Seed of Glory plus quarry here. Um, yeah, what are we up against? Probably like a Skycrag aggro of some sort. So I really just want to be able to slam Whirling Duo right on time. I don't really have a four cost card I need to follow this up with. Uh, so I'm just like trying to think my turn two, does that impact my turn three and four? So my turn three is probably just going to be Whirling Duo. So I can go Seed of Glory, Quarry, Shadow Sigil, Whirling Duo. Turn four, play the Crest of Chaos and not really be behind. I don't have a four drop I need to play. That seems fine. Uh, pick up the Orc Rune Hammer. That's a really key card to beat up on uh, Aegis Threats. Unfortunately, we don't have the second green just yet. Uh, but hopefully we can find it here in a moment. Looks like we're actually up against a Scream deck, a Hunting Scream type deck. Uh, that's still fine. I think our, our game plan is still the same here. We want to be able to hold up Torch later, though, since, uh, you know, Torch can obviously counter the Hunting Scream target, whatever he brings back with it. Hopefully we can draw an untapped green source here. A Justice Sigil would probably be the best possible draw. Um, yeah, it's a little aggressive, but I would just vanquish that, uh, if nothing else. Ooh, Highwayman is going to be real important against this deck. We can't cast it just yet, since we have played the Depleted Power. But I'll play this Depleted and hopefully find a green power. It's not green. It is a power, but no. We really want a green influence. Let's put that on bottom. I'm just going to vanquish the Champion of Fury and attack in. This is basically dealing six to him, or like six damage total. Dealing three and healing three is six net. As opposed to just holding it back and, um, you know, basically saving four damage. So, overall, I take more damage this way, but, you know, I take one and he takes three. So, it's a, a fair trade, I think. There's a Gorgon Frown deck. I'm not really keen to just shoot that down just yet. Um, well, if I had a green that I could know I could rune hammer it, I'd be keen to shoot it down. Since I'm planning on playing the Highwayman, let's just shoot it down. So I can, I can play Highwayman, ping off a guy, and attack him in for a bunch. Uh, that's Seek Power, actually. <laughs> now I wish I had held it back, but I didn't know for sure I was going to grab the green. Uh, so let's just play Highwayman. Ping off, uh, don't ping off the Granite and Drone, just in case he has a dark turn and wants to bring it back. You always ping off the tokens first. The ones with no text on them. And right now, even if he Haunting Screams the Gorgon Friend, I can draw some cards. That's not that great if he can't deal with these Lifesteal units. Because we're going to get to double lifesteal again. Uh, you know, he's getting actually pretty low. He put a torch in the void. That's got to mean he found a higher value target. Dark return? Well, that's not the card even true. Because it would have been reduced cost. Must have been something else. What else would he have grabbed? Hmm. I'm not entirely sure. Is it correct to just play out this rune hammer now? kill one of them attack with just the highwayman and hold this guy back to double block or to block one of them no it's probably best to just just get in there I, i'll sacrifice the rune hammer this way but it, it lets me make really profitable attacks here it's a little bit of an aggressive line but i think he's low enough and short enough on power that aggression here is good especially if we draw an untapped green source again we can cast a Karya. Uh, that's probably pretty unlikely because we just have the two um Two Justice Sigils. Uh, that was an interesting block by him. I guess this aggression's really getting to him. Him just double blocking there means he can't kill this Rune Hammer without using a Madness. Okay. Sure. That does kill it. And a zero cost combust. That makes a lot of sense. Okay. Alright, I hadn't I wasn't really playing around that particular line, but it's not the the worst thing. Um now any green source, even if it's depleted. We'll ask Castacaria and start winning the game. But we really need that, like, right now. Or at least a chump blocker like this. <laughs> uh, 
uh, you know, this will buy us a, you know, one turn of not letting him draw three cards. And just kidding, he's gonna start pulling this one out because we have not had a chance to cast the Sicario. Uh, if we can, if we can cast the Sicario though, he might struggle to deal with it. He's gained a ton of life though, so. But we're still at a healthy 25, so not time to panic just yet. Obviously, if he's able to deal with the Sicaria, then then we can ensue panic mode. Especially if he's able to madness devour it or something. I mean, I can live with that. That's no problem. Sure, I'll take that hit. Oh, my own highwayman. Not bad. Just hit him. Uh, since we're, you know, hitting him. Since we pinged him directly, he actually has to just jump lock this. But now I'm afraid of a madness combust. Did that just kill us? Uh, no. I guess it's pretty darn close. Yep, madness. I think we just have to take this. I could try to trade there, but I think that just kills any of our options to actually win the game. So now we need just like a big... I was hoping for another, you know, a 10 10 Akari or something like that. That's not it. A little bit flooded here at the end. But... Yeah, I'm not liking our odds. Dark return, that'll kill us. Okay. <laughs> Our own war cry on the highwayman is coming back to bite us. Um, so, uh, unfortunate. Uh, I think I think the main problem there was we delayed getting the Akaria out um, by a turn or two. I think that aggressive line with the hammer, using hammer on the one one. Like I said, it, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if that was right or not. I was hoping that he was stuck on power, he didn't have too many options, and we could just, you know, force a chump or push a bunch of damage, and then if we are able to draw the Akari, he's at five and he's dead. Um, obviously, he was able to play the Madness Combust because he had the one of them decreased in cost with the Quarry, which I didn't really play around. I hadn't thought of that. Uh, but of course, he could have just drawn a power instead. Anyway, uh, on to the next game. Um, this hand is kind of mediocre. It needs to find red off Seek Power, but then it doesn't have double green for Harsh Rule. But we're on the draw and have some good removal, so I think I'll keep it. We've got basically three power, a scout, and some good removal spells, so we can't fall that far behind. Uh, so now we can definitely look for red off the Seek Power. Quarry's fine since we're going to have, like I said, we'll be able to cast it, and I always love having Quarry. What are we up against here? Uh, some sort of Huru control. Probably has a third color, but maybe not. They don't always have a third color. I've seen straight up Huru control from time to time. So next turn will just be Fire Sigil Quarry, unless he presents a target to Annihilate, which he does not. Maybe stuck on two power. That would be awesome. Oh my god. Is, our opponent is stuck on two power. Uh, despite all that card dress, so let's just pick up the Akaria. We need to find more fire, but that'll be our way to victory here. Hey, there's a fire. So opponent found the power. Probably has wisdom here. Yep. So opponent had a little bit of a stumble, but with all that extra card draw, I imagine he should be able to keep on playing the game at, at a normal, normal pace, even though it's a bit behind now. So we can take advantage of this tempo that we've been given. Um, by just, you know, jamming out this Inquisitor Mokta. He probably doesn't have too many good removals for it. You know, he might have a, a Permafrost, which means just by the time we, we Harsh Rule, uh, you know, get recycled back into our deck. If we draw just a Fire Sigil here, or a Rakano Banner, uh, we could just uh, cast the Akaria. Uh, unfortunately, we do not. I'm not looking for Harsh Rule. I'm looking for Fire Influence. Um, I'm not really in a hurry to play my 7th power, so I'll hold on to the Vars Favor as a way to pop an Aegis. If he has like a Shelter Wing Rider or a Throne Warden or something. Probably Throne Warden's about to come down, if I had to guess. 
does not. So keep on beating him down with a Mokto until he decides to uh, stop it. Keep on beating him down with another Mokto. Sure. It delays my Ikaria by a turn, potentially, since I'm, I'm you know, one card further away from finding that red source. But Mokto number two. If he can't beat the first one, who's to say he can beat the second one? You know? If he's just spending a harsh roll on it. I'm alright with this. As soon as he plays like any kind of defensive threat here, you know, defensive unit, uh, a Nostrix, uh, Throne Ward, whatever, we can we can do with it many ways. Okay, so now we've got two Mokto's revenging, which feels really good against a uh, Huru deck that probably can't deal with them very efficiently. And there's the banner. Um, damn, I can't actually ping this off and cast the Ikaria. Because the power doesn't work out, I need to play the banner, but it'll be depleted in any situation. So I can't really cast the Ikaria right now. That's unfortunate. So I'm going to just hit him with that, play a banner down, and then just... I don't even care to slay it. If he has, like, protect, sure. Sort of a Sky King? Hmm. Hmm. I guess maybe I should have slayed it last turn. So that way I opened my ability to beat a Sword of the Sky King. I hadn't really thought of that. Um, probably just want to carry a Whirling Duo, attack with both. He's able to keep a Sky King alive, but this way I get to preserve a Slay. Yeah, I guess if I had perfect knowledge of what I had was going to draw and what my opponent was going to play, I would have made a different line here. Um, and now if we don't find one of those Moktos soon, we could be in a lot of trouble. Oh, the classic 10 Tanakaria off the top. Oh man, that's that's a little bit of luck, but uh, a, a lot of that's just good deck building. Running the full four of Akarias. And of course, you know, any of the Moktos would have been solid pickups as well that turn. So now we should have a 10-10 Mokto, most likely. Sitting around, waiting to come up. Facey just don't care. I feel like I'm just never going to get use out of these slays. But that's okay, because opponent is just about dead. Nope, okay, he's able to survive that. But we got um, got more work right going. I guess another Sword of the Sky King, though? Kind of are dead. Channel. Okay. 15-15 Mokto. I still don't survive another channel. He just has another channel. I'm just dead. <sighs> wow. Oh, man. Unreal. Unreal to take that loss there. Um, I thought for sure we had it. Um, you know, the the spot removal on the Moktos earlier and the fact that they kind of went so far down was pretty unfortunate. Um, man, let's see if we can at least pull out a win with this deck. I, I was doing great with this deck before I started making this video, so... Um, you know, these games have been won and lost by inches, so, you know, a lucky top deck here or there, or a slightly different ordering on the revenge or, or on the power, definitely could have swung the game one way or the other. Ah, man. I guess if we had, like, a, we need, like, a, a charge unit there with the war cries on it, not a Mokto. Or a weapon. <clears throat> anyway, let's get on to the next game. Uh, this hand is pretty solid. It's got four power. It doesn't have a lot of different colors, since it doesn't have any of our dual color cards, or dual color powers, but it's still fine. Hey, there's one. I'll just play that deplete one first. I'm not sure exactly. Like, if I draw another double, um, double power, uh, card, I don't necessarily want to cast these powers for the wrong one, you know? 
Uh, I don't want to get him to get any war cries off. Let's just annihilate this right away. It's probably the best use of annihilate against an Argenvort type deck anyway. Uh, I guess he has like Auric um, guys, Auric interrogators, but I'm not that concerned about him. So I think I want to grab a fire and a shadow here to grab double of everything. Uh, and I gotta play one of those two so I can cast um, Highwayman next turn. Maybe I don't even want to cast Highwayman next turn. Uh, yeah, I don't think I would do. I'm just gonna try to harsh rule the turn after this. I actually just need another fire in order to cast the Ikaria, so I'm gonna put that on the bottom. That'll be our seventh power, but that doesn't that seventh power doesn't actually help us cast the Ikaria, so. Alright, we can definitely be in trouble here if he just if he's holding back like a Tavrat or something in hand. A Mokto? I think actually Mokto makes a lot more sense than Harsh Rule here. It would force out um, something like his Tavrod. Or I guess another it would force him to play another card, right? And the Mokto is gonna gonna revenge anyway, so. Forcing another card. Uh, unfortunately, it's a Slay. I was hoping for another unit. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, he did play another unit anyway? Okay. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, let's just seek power for the red. Uh, play the red. Play the Harsh Rule. And hope the Ikaria next turn is good enough to stabilize. If he has exactly Tavrod as the last card, it uh, might not. Ooh. Crown Watch Traitor means that I need to hold open the torch. Or I could like Daisho smack it, torch, hit him. It's probably the most efficient use of my mana. Let's do that. Daisho hit this guy, torch it to finish it off, then hit him. So I preserve the Daisho at one toughness, and then Akari is coming down next turn. There we go. Alright. Now we should be able to just win this game. <laughs> I say that uh, <laughs> a little preemptively, but yes, our opponent sees the right end of the wall here. Uh, did not have the Tavrod to bail him out. Uh, let's play one more since we had we got off to a poor start. I was hoping to, you know, demonstrate the power of this deck. I think this deck is very powerful. Um, although the, uh, the the power, ironically enough, of the deck can can have some trouble. Uh, looks like we're up against Finkel again, who's on the Huru control. So with that in mind, I'm not really a huge fan of this hand. Or Greenhammer is fine, but. Um, the other cards in the hand are just not that appealing. Rise of the Challenge is actually one of the main ones I was, I was hoping to get. Uh, Rising for uh, a big Akaria or a Makta is quite strong. I don't have anything... I guess I don't want removal spells, so I just want to scout removal spells at the bottom. Yeah. I was about to say, you know, sometimes you don't want to play your scout power right away, even though it's your main depleted power, because your hand often wants anything. It could take a power or a spell or a unit. Uh, this was not the case with this hand. This hand actually does not want any removal spells because Barbarian's too rude where they don't run too many units. So, um, I was fine to scout right away. And we're not going to have an influence requirement on Akari. We'll be able to cast it right on time. Ooh, perfect. Uh, let's just play the Highwayman, get him going. I think that's probably better than playing Rise of the Challenge here. See if we can bait out the island's uh, choice on the Highwayman rather than on the Rise of the Challenge. He had a stop there, which makes me think he has an island's choice, but he chose to use it on, um, chose to answer with the Hailstorm, which gives us an opening now to resolve the Rise of the Challenge. Um, do I want to, though? I think so, because I can Rise of the Challenge. I guess that's really weak to Reign of Frogs. Uh, no, I still want to rise. I want to rise for, um, the Daisho. He's going to struggle to deal with Daisho outside of a lightning strike. He just doesn't have power here. Um, I don't really want to play into a lightning strike. Let's just 
highwayman him. See if this can we can bait him out. Like, because I know he has a stop here, which is either an island's choice or a lightning strike. And the fact that he's not doing it right away means he has another way to answer it, Hailstorm. Uh, but that also means that he might... Um, uh, what was I going to say? That, that it means he... he. I think it's Lightning Strike rather than Island's Choice. If it's Island's Choice, it really only has one function, and that's killing units, since I already resolved my Rise of the Challenge. Uh, so I'm pretty sure he has a Lightning Strike. So with that in mind, I think I just want to get in with a dice show right now while I can. While I know I can get in there for 12, put him to 3, and then... He's going to hold up and Lightning Strike next turn, but the Akari will just kill him. Or he plays his own Rune Hammer, and Akari still kills him. Or also another Rune Hammer kills him. But since we, we were able to sneak that in underneath, um, uh, underneath his Lightning Strike, obviously it was unfortunate for him that he got stuck on 4 power, but um, I think we navigated that properly, and he, he got hit with a Daisho despite having a Lightning Strike in hand. Alright, so uh, I hope that kind of demonstrates some of the power of the deck. Obviously, the first two games didn't go as well as expected, but uh, they were very close, very closely fought. Um, Could have gone either way. I think this deck is really good for the meta right now, uh, and I've been climbing quite well with it in the top 100, top 50 Masters. So I hope you have a lot of success with it. If you decide to try it out, uh, the deck list is in the description below. Be sure to check it out, and thanks for watching.